Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, July 16th, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of medicine. Scientists from the University of North Carolina have been testing an immunotherapy on mice with diabetes. Last week on Brainstorm, we discussed experiments done on mice with diabetes involving the transplant of stem cells. As with that story, the immunotherapy being tested is relevant to only type 1 diabetes. Also known as insulin-dependent diabetes, this form of the disease is actually an autoimmune condition. Certain T-cells get out of control and attack a person's own beta cells, which are the cells that produce insulin. There have been some promising results from previous immune therapies in the past. However, there have also been issues. For one, past tests have only had a temporary effect against diabetes, and they used what are called depleting antibodies. Unfortunately, this wasn't selective, affecting healthy T-cells that fight infection as well as the autoimmune cells. So these scientists have been working with non-depleting antibodies, particularly ones that bind to proteins in T-cells without destroying them. These tests on mice engineered to mimic diabetes went extremely well, with 80% of the mice going into remission within 48 hours of the treatment. The antibodies appeared extremely selective in purging destructive T-cells from the pancreas as well as boosting regulatory cells. If perfected, this immunotherapy will mainly be used to treat diabetes in its early stages, although it'll be some time before it reaches human testing. Next is a quick update from the field of neuroscience. Researchers from Australia have been studying zebrafish to better understand spinal cord injuries. You see, the permanent paralysis that usually results from a spinal cord injury is actually a result of the body's natural defense mechanism. After any injury, cells called glial cells flood the area, sealing the wound but also forming scar tissue. Now, unlike humans and other mammals, fish generally can recover from a spinal injury, hence the study of the zebrafish. A major difference is the shape the glial cells take after injury. The dense tissue in mammals results in the cells having a branched shape. Whereas in fish, the glial cells have an elongated shape, essentially bridging the injury and encouraging regeneration. My studies show that mammalian cells can take on this elongated shape and are encouraged to do so by certain molecules. Initial research shows this helps regeneration in mice and humans, with further research planned. Our final story is from the world of technology. A project from MIT's Media Lab has developed a quick and simple tool for diagnosing Parkinson's. Parkinson's is a disease with an unknown origin and currently no cure, although certain surgeries and drugs can slow its progression. The main cause is the death of neurons that produce dopamine, which is an important neurotransmitter. It's especially important to regions of the brain that control motor skills and coordination, the lack of dopamine causing Parkinson's most recognizable symptoms. More neurons die as the disease progresses, resulting in worsening tremors, other movement, and non-movement symptoms. Early identification and tracking of this disease is very important. However, this involves time-consuming and expensive tests of motor functions, which is where technology comes in. As you may know, the motor symptoms associated with Parkinson's also affect the voice. What you may not know is that these vocal changes, while initially subtle, can work as a test for Parkinson's before other symptoms arise. So an algorithm was designed to analyze speech and identify 10 impairments common to Parkinson's. In the lab, it achieved an incredible 99% accuracy in identifying the speech markers. And if you go to parkinsonsvoice.org, you could call and have your voice analyzed and help prove the algorithm. As is tested more, this technology will hopefully become a valuable diagnostic tool for Parkinson's and other conditions with vocal symptoms. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description. Also feel free to contact us. We're looking for more volunteer researchers to help with Brainstorm and Biohacks.